Hello everyone, my name is Vaishnavi Dasil and I am from Computer Department. In my team, I have Sanskriti Namale from IT Department and Swapnali Kaldone from Computer Department. Our project name is Face Mask Detector. As we all know, living in the situation of pandemic is not that easy, especially when you have to wear mask every day and everywhere, wherever you go. But as a responsible citizen, we have to wear mask so that we can protect ourselves and our loved ones. There are some people who are irresponsible in our society who don't like to follow the rules and end up risking multiple lives and making the situation worse for everyone. As we all know that our country is going to be in the unlocking phase in the near future and there are some authorities who would want to protect their premises and make it safe place to work in for their employees. Such authorities can be hospitals, offices, airports, schools, colleges, malls, etc. Face mask detector is based on the deep learning algorithm which can help certain authorities who want to make their environment safe. In this project, we have three parts, data pre-processing, model training and camera integration. We will see each part in detail. Let's see the demo first. So as we can see, I'm not wearing any mask, so it is showing no mask and the number in front of no mask is the accuracy of our, of our model. So if I wear mask, it is showing mask with 100% accuracy. And if I wear mask like this, it is now showing that the person is not wearing mask. So I have to wear mask like this. Then only the model is detecting the mask. Now we will see the implementation. So now as we have seen our demo, I will uh, show how pre-processing is working. For that we will see our data set first. So here we have our data set. Here it is the project folder in which in the data set folder we have two folders with mask and without mask. In with mask folder we have all the images of people who are wearing mask. These are around 1900 images. You can see and uh, in the without mask folder there are images of people who are not wearing mask so these are also around 1900 images uh, which we are going to use to train our model uh, this data set is taken from Kaggle which is an open source so now let's see the code for the pre-processing uh, these are all the imports which we need for training and uh, processing pre-processing purpose. We will see uh, those as we go through our code. So we have initialized the initial learning rate. Uh, initial learning rate are epochs and the batch size for the entire code. So the initial learning rate is the default schedule in all Keras optimizers. Uh, the epochs are nothing but they are hyperparameters that define the number of uh, times the learning algorithm will work through the entire training set and the batch size is just the size of the training data set. So in the directory I have mentioned the path for the data set and the, in the categories I have mentioned names of the folders inside the data set which is with mask and without mask so uh, in the data preprocessing we are converting all the images in our data set with mask and without mask into the image arrays so that is the basic concept for the preprocessing uh, here we have data list and the labels list in the data data list there are going to be image arrays and inside the labels, there are going to be the labels for those image arrays if it is with mask and without mask. Like now, we are going to iterate our uh, iterate over our categories. So we are joining the path of the we are joining the path of directory and the category, which we, which is just going to give the path for the particular folder, and then. After joining the path, we are going to list down all the you. We are going to list down all the images inside that path using the list dir function. Uh, the list dir function lists down all the images 
like list down all the images inside that part of the path provider as we have listed down all the images now we are joining the previous path and the image so we get each and every image from our data set and we process all the and now we are processing all the images using the load image function so we are loading the image and then we are converting that image into 224 into 224 which is just a height and width which is the target size of our uh, pre-processing uh, image pre-processing so then we are converting our image into an array using image to array function uh, which is coming from here uh, tensorflow.keras.preprocessing.image now we are converting the image to array using uh, image to array function uh, next we use preprocess input function which uh, as we are using mobile net in our project we need to use preprocess input in our code now we are just appending the image array to the data list and appending the label uh, appending the category of that image to the label as we have just seen the categories are just with mask and without mask which ultimately are the labels for that image so we are appending those to the labels list now uh, we have one good thing that is our all our data is into the numerical format but also the labels are in the still in the alphabetical format which is not really of any use for the further coding so we are going to convert that into the binary format that is zeros and ones so for that we are using label binarizer method which is coming from here uh, scale learn pre -process, dot preprocessing so it is coming from that so we are converting using label binarizer you we are converting all the categories into all the labels into the categorical variables and after that converting that we are going to, uh, now we have our data into the list format but uh, we are converting those into the numpy arrays as uh, the data learn the deep learning algorithms work with those only so we are going to convert that into our numpy arrays using the np dot array and now we have our data into the and now we have we have our data into the right formats to uh, train our data with so now train test split splits the data uh, like it splits the training and testing data so we have here we have uh, like the test size here is 20 percent so out of uh, 1900 images per category the 20 percent are for testing and 80 percent are for training so here the pre-processing part ends the next part is training part which will be covered by Swapnali Hello all, my name is Swapna Likardoni. Now I'll explain you the training part. So in the training part, we are using convolutional neural network that is CNN. So in the neural network, convolutional neural network is one of the main categories to do the images recognition and images classification. So CNN image classification takes an input image, process it, and classify it under certain categories. So the CNN has four main operations that is convolution, non-linearity that is ReLU, pulling or subsampling, classification that is fully connected layer. So in the training part we are using mobile net instead of convolution. So why we are using mobile net is because Mobile net is faster compared to the convolution layer. So, and it has lesser parameter compared to CNN. So, now we'll see the mobile net. So, 
So, MobileNet, it is a streamlined architecture that uses depth-wise separable convolution to construct the lightweight deep convolutional neural network. And it provides efficient model for mobile and embedded vision application. So, MobileNet, it reduces the number of parameters when compared to the network with the regular convolutions with the same depth in the nets and which results into the lightweight deep neural network. Now we'll see the non-linearity that is ReLU layer. So ReLU, it stands for Rectified Linear Unit for Non-Linear Operation. So what's the purpose of ReLU is? It introduces the non-linearity in our convnet and since the real world data would want our convnet to learn would be non-negative linear values. That is, ReLU is applied to each and every pixel and replace all the negative pixel value in the feature map by zero. So next comes the pooling layer. So pooling layer section would reduce the number of parameters when the images are too large. So it's also called as subsampling or downsampling, which reduces the dimensionality of each map but it does not return important information. Then the last layer is fully connected layer. So the layer we call as a fully connected layer because we are flattening our matrix into the vector and feed it into a fully connected layer just like the neural network. So and for that it uses the softmax activation function in the output layer to get the high level feature of the input image. So now we'll see the coding part. So our first step is the initialization. Here we are initializing the initial learning rate to the 1e raised to minus 4 that is 0 0.001. So, when the learning rate is less, then the loss can be calculated properly and the accuracy will be increased. So, here we are initializing epochs to the 20 and batch size to the 32. That is the ideal values. So, now by, the, now by using mobile net, we are generating two modules. That is the head module and the base module. And for that, we are using mobile net output for the normal model that is for our head model and the base model. So next here. So here we are using image data net generator. Image data generator. So what it does is it creates the data augmentation by training the image. What's that is it creates many images with the single image by adding the properties to the image like shifting and rotation. So applying these properties, it trains the image. So here next comes the modeling part. So in the modeling part, we are using mobile net. So we are creating the best model with the parameter weight image name. So, which is the pre-trained model and when we use this model, those weights will be initialized for us and it will give us the better result. So now, and also the parameter include top as a boolean. By default, its value is true. That's why we are setting it as a false. And the next parameter is input tensor. So, tensor is nothing but the it is, it is used to activate the shape of the image and with the parameters height, width and the three channels that is the RGB which is red, green and blue. After the construction of base model, here comes the construction of head model. So here in the construction of fully connected layer, we are using that using Pooling. So here the head model object passing the 
in the head model object we are passing the base model up output and for that we are using average pooling method with the pool size 7 and 7 after that we are flattening the head model with the flatten name then comes the dense function and for that we are using the activation function as a relu so what relu does is it is a go to activation function for the non linear use cases and the final the next is the dropout so dropout is used to avoid the overfitting of the image then last is the <coughs> dense which is the output layer so we are passing the our two output layers which is the with mask and without mask layer and for that we are using the softmax function to get the result in binary format that is in the 0 1 so here next comes the calling part so here we are calling the model function input and output so in the input we are passing the best model input and output head model output so next step is we are using the for loop for for we are using for loop for taking care of the loop over all the layers in the base model and freeze them so that they will not update it during the first training process so after that uh, compilation part is done so here we are compiling our model with the optimizer Adam and learning rate and with the DK so here we are compiling the model with the loss calculated by the binary cross entropy and the accuracy by the matrices so here next comes the after training the best model we are training the head model so here we are training the head network flowing data to train more images and for the validation of data we are using the test x and test y function so next step is we are evaluating the network with the predict method which is we are predicting the model with the test x and the batch size then now the each image in the testing set we need to find the index of the label with the corresponding largest probability and for that we are using argmax function so after all the testing now we are classifying the report with the good format and for that we are using classification report function then after saving after saving the mask detector model in the h5 format to get our output so the last is finally we are plotting the training loss and accuracy using the matplotlib so to plot the accuracy and training we are using the matplotlib plot functions so yes that's all from my side now the sanskriti will explain you the next part thank you Till now, we have the mass detection unit, but we do not have the base detection unit. In order to do base detection, I have downloaded a couple of files here, which used as the base detection cursor, and I have saved them in a folder base detector. So now we have this file for the base detection, mass detector model for the mass detection, and for the camera operation, we are using open studio. I have created open Python file here and I have import here. Let me check the bottom of it. So here I am loading the base detection. That is nothing but the couple of files we have for the base detection cursor. So these files are under base detection folder. So I am giving the path to those files here. 
and setting them in the test kitchen. In order to use those files, I am using ReadNet, which comes under the CD book, and the model called CMD, that is Skip Zero Sample. Similarly, I am loading Mark Detection model here using Load model. Mark Detection model is the model which we are using for the mark detection. So now we have to load our camera. For that, I am using Studio Stream. So in Studio Stream function, there is something called a source. Source is nothing but the camera you use. If you have two or three cameras, you can give index. We are using primary camera, hence we are using zero index. But if you want to use second camera, then you use one index. And the start method actually loads the camera. So in a while loop, I am reading the train. Every train is nothing but the unknown. So every train flowing through sequentially and the frames per second in the illusion of the arrive, it will look like a baby. After you read the train, here I am opening a frame. That is a dialog box kind of a thing. Which I have named it as frame and width of 4 inches. So now we have the face map for the face detection, mask map for the mask detection and the frame for the baby. Here I am defining a function with this as an argument. And we will do this normal manipulation here and return back the location and the prediction. Location is nothing but the xy coordinate of the rectangle surrounding a face. And the prediction is the accuracy of the person wearing a mask or not. Prediction may be like a 90% it is wearing a mask and 10% not wearing a mask. We call that method here and we will get location and the prediction as a tuple. Then we will do tuple unpacking here to get xy coordinate and the mask and without mask prediction that is prediction percentage. Here we add label that is mask and no mask, green color for the mask and the red color for the no mask. We will display the label using format. We will just display percentage of the prediction. And here we are drawing rectangle on a frame. And we are showing a frame nothing but a sequence of picture that is going to flow through. And finally, we are breaking a while loop after we hit the Q button and destroy all the windows and stop video streaming. Thank you.